the Raiders winning the toss they elect to receive. So number 16, Tony Fritch of the Oilers will be kicking off. Chester Willis and Arthur Whittington are the two deep backs set for the return. Whittington, number 22. Willis is number 38. And we're underway at the Astrodome in Houston. It is high, but it is short. Taken on the run by Willis. And he returns near the 30-yard line. A return of 15 yards. Let's look at the offense of the Oakland Raiders. It will be young Mark Wilson, a quarterback, with Derek Jensen and Kenny King as the two running backs. The receivers, Cliff Branch, Morris Bradshaw, the tight end is Derek Ramsey, and that offensive line of Shell, Marsh, Dalby, Marvin, and Lawrence. That is the offense. They mark it at the 31-yard line. Mark Wilson in his fourth start. Bradshaw comes in motion. The give is inside to Kenny King. And he'll pick up three yards before he's stopped by Daryl Hunt, so it'll be second and seven. The defense basically for the Houston Oilers in that three-four set that they start with is Andy Doris, Ken Kennard, and Elvin Bethay up front. Four linebackers, Washington, Hunt, Bingham, and Brazil in the secondary, and it is a good one. That's the defensive line. Secondary has a Wilson, Stimrick, Perry, and Reinfeld. Second and seven. Branch goes in motion. Jensen is nailed at the 36. He has two, so it'll be third down and five. Bingham is the man who stopped him along with Daryl Hunt. Charlie, I think you brought out something that's very important. Both these teams are four and five. They are both two games behind the leaders in their division. They have to win today. This is a must game for both teams if they have any aspirations whatsoever of making the playoffs. We talked about young Mark Wilson, that uh, he's over the jitters, that he's more calm now than he was in his start. He's going to have to put the ball up in the air. We're going to find out right now how calm he is. Third down five. Four on the pattern. Has plenty of time, and he throws it away. He was looking for Morris Bradshaw, but Bradshaw was covered downfield, and so he simply threw it away. Well, he threw it to Lester Hayes. He threw it to one of his own men, number 37, but... That's calmness. Uh, there was, wasn't anybody open. He didn't want to take a chance of an interception, so he threw the football away. They'll punt it away, and they've got the, the outstanding punter, I think, in, uh, in football today in Ray Guy back there, although Ray has been bothered somewhat with a back injury. Ray Guy second in the NFL in kicking. Carl Roaches and Willie Tellis are the two deep backs set for the return. Watching Ray Guy is like watching an instructional film on punting. Barney, get down there, Barney. It is taken at the 27-yard line by Carl Roaches, and he has dropped in his tracks. As down very quickly was Frank Hawkins. A kick of only 39 yards and a marker dropped on the play. It was dropped on the far side, back at the line of scrimmage. I would say they probably refused it because that kick only traveled 39 yards. And for Ray Guy, that's not very... That kick didn't travel too far. And normally in this situation, it is a third man going downfield before the kick. The two outside men can release immediately on the kicking team. The other players cannot go downfield until the punt. Encroachment number 48 on the kicking team declined. First down. Like I said, it's usually <laughs> encroachment. <laughs> but they did not want to give Ray Guy another shot at kicking the ball. As I said, it only, it only went 39 yards, and they'll settle with that. That is the offense that you're seeing for the Houston Oilers, those are the receivers in the offensive line. Houston from their own 26-yard line, Reeves at quarterback. He gives to Campbell, the lead block is by Tim Wilson. Earl picks up a couple of yards on the play, Otis McKinney makes the stop, it'll be second down and eight. So we now can check out the defense of the Oakland Raiders. Basically, it'll be Matuzak, Robinson, and Browning up front. The four linebackers, Hendricks, McClanahan, Millen, and Martin, and that secondary of Hayes, Jackson, McKinney, and Owen. During the course of the game defensively for both sides, because they employ that 3-4 defensive alignment in a passing situation, you're going to get a variety of things that can't happen. They generally bring in four down linemen. Second down. Go get him, go get him. 
not that smooth a handoff to Earl Wilson, which is something that we'll be keeping an eye on because John Reeves simply has not played that much. McClanahan and Browning on the tackle. He's a nine-year veteran. We're looking at Earl Campbell, number 34, and I said he has to have a big game in order for Houston to win this football game. The, the exchange was a little high. The John Reeves hitting him up near the shoulder pads. It should have been a little lower, but there wasn't much of a hole there. Oakland, of course, understands that Earl Campbell has to have a big day. Therefore, they're going to be watching him very closely. Shotgun, he'll be throwing the ball now. Third down and six. The Oilers last in offense in the NFL, going deep, far side, into coverage, going to Ken Burrow, and it's incomplete. Excellent coverage by number 37, Lester Hayes. Matuzak was putting the pressure on Reeves, but Hayes was all over Ken Burrow like a blanket. Yes, he was. And you know that pass, if it had been in bounds, could have been completed because it was underthrown. And because the coverage was, was so tight by Lester Hayes on Kenny Burrow, Lester didn't know where the ball was. But so many times you've seen it, the pass is underthrown and the receiver comes up with it. That's because he has the ability to look back and watch the pass. Fourth down, the Farsi will be kicking to Ted Watts. Watts, the rookie, number one draft choice from Texas Tech. There's pressure, but he gets it off. Plays it on the bounce, takes it at the 29, and returns about five yards, maybe six. A punt of 40 yards. And we've got a timeout. We have no score. 11.51 left to go. We're in the first quarter at the Astrodome in Houston, Texas. We'll be back in a moment. Kenny Staber looks like a tall Willie Nelson. He has that sprained wrist. Can play today if they need him. He was able to throw. He wasn't putting a lot of zip on the ball in, in warm-ups. Got a score. Washington leading Detroit 7-0 first quarter. Here we have no score. Open first down there on the 34-yard line. Bradshaw in motion. Wilson comes out throwing. Tip incomplete. Kenny King, the intended receiver. Andy Doris is the man who tipped it. He was looking to go downfield, and here he's taking a look at the standings. We're talking about Houston is two games back of Cincinnati, a game back of Pittsburgh. So it's a must game today for the Houston Oilers. Same situation for Oakland, even more so, I think, because they have three teams that are two games in front of them in that Western division of the AFC. Second and 10, Oakland, their own 34. Wilson throws, sideline pass on target, first down Bradshaw. 45-yard line of the Oilers. 19 yards on the play, Mike Reinfeldt makes the tackle. Bradshaw came up with that uh, pass. Here is Mark Wilson, number six, going back, and he has calmed down since uh, the initial start. Taking a look at the throw, good throw. He's got a very strong arm. And the receiver, the receiver had a lot of room. Now, the other side is Cliff Branch, 21, and they feel that he is the, the, the biggest game breaker in the game today, and he gets a lot of attention. Stemrick all over him. Live action now. First down, Derek Jensen. He goes to the 41-yard line. They had spotted the ball at the 46, so it's a gain of five. It'll be second and five. Robert Brazil, the right outside linebacker, number 52, is the man who brought him down. You notice how that, that passing, they threw the ball a couple of times, and all of a sudden now they get five yards on first down. When the first time they had possession of the ball, they didn't, they didn't get anything on for a first down running with it. Just inside the Houston 41-yard line. No score. We're four and a half minutes into the ball game. Bradshaw comes in motion. Play action. Going deep. And it is incomplete. Cliff Branch, the intended receiver. Stimrick had picked him up, had help from Reinfeld. I said he had a strong arm. He indicated it right there with a nice throw. He did overthrow Branch by a little bit. It was pretty good coverage back there, but it hasn't been a perfect pass. Branch would have had a shot at it. But one other thing that that does, you touched on it a moment ago. Now, that secondary is going to be a little bit softer. Well, what a defensive back. Uh, he can get nervous out there on the plane because if he makes a mistake, if they change the scoreboard at six points. So if they start throwing over his over his head, they think, well, what did they find out in the films? They indicated they should go deep against me. So he's going to get more and more room. And it was Wilson of Branch last week to give us to Kenny King. And King should pick up the first down as he goes to the 35. He needed five and he got six yards. Brazil and Hartwig. 
Now in the secondary team up on the tackle, but last week they opened their ball game with an 80-yard scoring play that unfortunately for the Oakland Raiders did not count. It was called back on holding, but they have stated that they felt that that opening bomb then loosened up the defense and they were able to throw underneath the coverage. You know, we just saw something unusual for Oakland, third and five, and they ran the football. At the Houston 35-yard line, first down. Wilson underthrows Bradshaw. Vernon Perry had the coverage. He's hoping to get out there on single coverage. Take a look at the secondary, and you can take a look at what is happening out there. This is a zone. You see the men just dropping back. The cornerback, J.C. Wilson, is just dropping back to his area. The safety man's going back in the middle of the field. That is a zone defense. They're playing a zone. But a zone becomes man-to-man -man once somebody comes in your area. John Flores, the head coach of the Oakland Raiders. Mark Wilson, the quarterback, now has completed one of five for 19 yards. Second and ten. Kenny K. And that is all as Greg Bingham was there to bring him down. Good play by Bingham, number 54, the linebacker. The fans here at the Astrodome yelling for defense. New England, seven, Miami, nothing, first quarter score. Green Bay ahead of the Giants, seven, nothing in the first period. I know that Miami's always had problems with the Patriots up in New England. in motion. Wilson over the middle. It is incomplete. He was going to Cliff Branch. Branch was the short man. The deep man was Ramsey. And he overthrew Branch and underthrew Ramsey. Well, by short, you mean he wasn't, he's not too tall? That's right. <laughs> he's not too tall either, but it was a delay pattern. He was hoping to get the linebackers deep and try to hit Cliff Branch underneath those linebackers. And with the great speed that Cliff Branch has, to try to have a linebacker make an open field tackle on him. Chances are they would have picked up the first down, but they didn't. So, they're going to try to kick it away from 51 yards out. And that is the magic number for Chris Barr. In each of the last three games, he has hit a field goal from 51 yards. Will it carry? It is not there. He misses from 51 yards, so that breaks his string. He had just enough uh, distance on it, but it was too wide. 8.51 left to go. We're in the first quarter. We have no score. Here's what Chris Barr is looking at, and you said 51 yards is his magic number. That's about his distance. He did have the distance, but it was just a little to the right. <laughs> it becomes lonely as a <laughs> kicker when you miss. Sometimes it's lonely, even when you're not out there. Tony Frisch, they don't even, they don't even gather around him when he's, when he's not scheduled to go out. Houston takes over at the line of scrimmage following the missed field goal, the 33-yard line. Reeves to throw. Yes, yes. Backs in the block, drops the pass off right side to Campbell. And Campbell goes to the 41-yard line. He picks up eight yards. Matt Millen is the man who brought him down. Now for Earl Campbell, that is his 16th reception of the season, something they've been working on, and that ties his all-time pro high as a receiver. Well, they made it easy for him because it was a little screen pass, and he only threw it about seven yards. Easy for both Earl Campbell and John Reeves, the quarterback, but what it did, it picked up about eight yards on the play and puts him in excellent position right now on second down. Second down and a couple, eye formation. This is a running formation. Campbell gets it. And may wedge out a couple of yards but I believe he will be short of the first down. We'll come back in a moment. Let's go to New York, Brian Gumbel. All right, Charlie, up in New England, here's the uh, Patriots, appropriately enough, showing the spirit of 76 yards. Brogan to Stanley Morgan for a touchdown. Point after, Pats in front over the Dolphins, 7-0. Charlie? All right, thank you, Brian. We will have a measurement. The change will come out. That'll go in the record book as a gain of two yards. And with the two yards, Earl Campbell now has a total of 6,000 career yards rushing. You know, it's amazing about Earl Campbell because there wasn't anything there. And the yardage that he gets without any gaping holes out there. He needs, what, 84 yards coming into this ball game for his 1,000-yard uh, season once again. His 86. fourth in a row. 86 yards for his uh, fourth 1,000 yard season in a row. And this is his fourth year in the NFL. 
That is the Oilers' first first down of the afternoon. At their own 43-yard line, Reeves to throw on first down, drops it off to Earl Campbell. Campbell to the 50, to the 48-yard line of Oakland. Rod Martin makes the tackle. What they're doing is they're throwing screen passes on first down, getting the ball out to Earl Campbell, away from the masses in the middle. Here it is, the blocking up front. 68, Johnny Robinson, a rookie, playing the nose tackle position. Now, you see number 62, Schumacher, the guard, leave his man and go out and try to get involved in the play. 60 is Ed Fisher. Now, what you have is Earl Campbell out wide, and defensive backs and linebackers have to make an open field tackle. He nine yards, second down and one. Running formation, they're throwing out of the eye, both backs in the block far side. It is incomplete. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that was Fritz that <laughs> Dave Casper had cut off the pattern, but Fritz continued on down the sideline. Does he look like a receiver? <laughs> he was looking to go downfield, but what Reeves did, didn't want to take a loss. He just threw the ball away, looking for a low number, I guess, and number 16 is out there. Look at, let's see his style, how he catches the ball. That is awful. That is awful. No wonder he's a kicker. He caught it with his stomach is what he did. <laughs> Notice he's looking down at the coaches. Did you see that? Did you see that? I'm ready. Third down and one. Here's Campbell with the first down. Otis McKinney stopped him. Campbell picked up 74 yards last week all in the first half. Then came out. Got a twinge of a hamstring pull. There you take a look. As 39 is Armstrong, 45 is Wilson. Coming up, getting involved in the block. 74 is Leon Leon Gray. 77 is Angelo Fields. They put him in in short yardage situations because he's so small. He's around 300 pounds. Campbell has picked up eight yards in four carries. Rim throw in motion. A little play action on first down. Going deep to Complete. Lester Hayes and Burgess Owens had the double coverage. Now let's go to New York and Brian Gumbel. Well, Charlie, following that Grogan to Morgan touchdown, the Dolphins came out and drove back down the field in Foxborough and threatened to score, but David Woodley was intercepted at the three-yard line by Raven Claiborne, so the Patriots are in business once again and leading 7-0 in the first. Charlie? All right, thank you, Brian. Here at the Astrodome, we have no score between Oakland and Houston, and again, the Oakland Raiders and the Houston Oilers have identical four or five records. If either team has a hope of making the playoffs, they must win today. Reeves the quarter, fires, it is complete. Keep it over the middle, tight end Dave Casper. Big first down to the 25-yard line. 21 yards on the play. And illegal motion against the Oilers, so bring it back as the flag is dropped at the 45-yard line. One thing we found out about John Reeves, he gets back in that pocket in a hurry, and he releases that ball in a hurry, and he had a lot of zip on it. Now, they have thrown the ball on first down the last three times that they've had a first down situation. That's loosening up, I believe, that Oakland Raider defense a little bit. That time they had more men out in the pattern than the play before when he was trying to hit Kenny Burrow for the for the Illegal moment. motion, number 34, offense, second down. Earl Campbell got a running start. Houston, by the way, the third least penalized team in the National Football League, and that one really hurt. Ed Biles, the head coach of the Oilers in his first year, second and 15, Mike Holston. The rookie from Morgan State comes in. Wilson comes out. Campbell, the remaining back, three wide receiver. Reeves drops it off to Earl Campbell. Campbell has five, and then another yard to the 45-yard line of Oakland. He picks up six. It'll be third and nine. Rod Martin just had him by the foot. Just an outlet pass to Earl Campbell. Now, Earl's the leading pass receiver right now for the, the Houston Oilers. He's looking downfield. No one is there. Hendricks is putting the heat on him. He gets the ball out to Earl Campbell, hoping that he can break a couple of tackles, which he's done so many times. Does break one, but they get a hold of him, makes a couple of yards. But they're in a situation now where his third and about nine yards to go for a first down. Not only is the leading pass receiver, he is thus far the only pass receiver. Well, I said uh, earlier that if they're going to win, Earl Campbell's going to have to have a big, big day, and they're going to call timeout because they had some confusion as to what the offensive lineup should be. 
So that stops the clock with five minutes and nine seconds left to go. We're in the first quarter. We have no score between Oakland and Houston. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson. We're at the Astrodome in Houston. We have no score between the Raiders and the Oilers. Third down and nine. Oakland has held the opposition 70% of the time on third down. The Raider defense has played exceptionally well from the shotgun Reeves. He has to scramble. He throws, and it is incomplete. Willie Jones was in hot pursuit. Adger Armstrong, the intended receiver, will be fourth down and nine. And once again, what he was doing was just getting rid of the football and not taking that loss. Bringing in a situation where Parsley's into the ball game, so they're going to have to punt the ball away. But what they should be able to do if he is able to knock it out of out of bounds is put Oakland once again in terrible field position. The Raiders this year have had some problems returning punts. Ira Matthews was cut because he had some problems fielding the return of punts. Now it is the rookie Ted Watts, and he's back at the 10-yard line. Floater Watt stays away from it. Goes into the end zone. So they'll bring it out to the 20 yard line. A kick of 45 yards, but there was a flag drop at the line of scrimmage on the far side. He tried to hit that ball easy and he hit it too well because it really took off. Turned over. Illegal motion against the Oilers is the call. A look at today's officials. Perfect weather conditions Illegal inside motion, of the dome. Offense, right tackle, refuse. So Oakland takes the ball at the 20 yard line. That is where their offense will go to work. With 4.51 left to go, first quarter. Still no score between the Raiders and the Oilers. Charlie, times do change. Number 63, Gene Upshaw. Started every game since he put on a Raider uniform until a couple of weeks ago, and they, they put him on the bench in favor of rookie Kurt Marsh. But what a tremendous player and a tremendous career he's had so far. Wilson comes out throwing. He goes deep. Bradshaw turns. It is. Flag goes down. A flag goes down. 39-yard line of the Oilers. Wilson had the coverage and the ball was thrown out of bounds even if he caught it I don't believe it would have been in bounds there is contact there is contact the ball is short and lands out of bounds that's what I was talking earlier about the receiver does have an advantage when the ball isn't really well thrown because he is looking back whereas the defensive man has to react to what the receiver does and generally, he does not see the ball. After the conference, they're going to bring it back. Oh, yes. There is the play. Now let's find out the explanation is. There is not pass interference on the play because the ball would have been out of bounds and not catchable. There is no foul. That is a rule book call. That is a rule book call. And then you said it at the very beginning because if the ball is not catchable, then you cannot call pass interference. That's the way it is written in the rule book. The, the, what, the rip, what the official was doing, he was looking at the play, the two players involved. And he saw contact, so he threw the flag down. The linesman then coming down said no, there was no opportunity to catch it because it was out of bounds. That's why you're seeing more and more conferences uh, among the officials in the National Football League this year. So it is second and ten at the Oakland 20-yard line. Wilson stands in the pocket. It's intercepted. Oilers have the ball. Stimmerick with the interception. Big turnover. 15 yards on the return. The Oilers have the break. Charlie, you and I said this was an important game. The teams know it. The fans know it also. He was looking to go to Cliff Branch 
number 21 across the middle and Stemrick 27 number 27 has him well covered gets up in the air makes an outstanding interception and puts him in great field position Wilson tried to force the ball that time he should not have done it because branch was not open first down Houston open 17 yard line play action Reeves fires in zone John Reeves trying to do the same thing that Mark Wilson just got through doing and Reeves is fortunate that that ball wasn't intercepted he tried to force it between two Oakland Raider defenders Monty Jackson and Burgess Owens were there once in a while you get away with it but not all the time he's going to looking for Kenny Burrow but you see 44 Burgess Owens has all he has a better shot at it than Kenny Burrow does with that interception by Stimrick Oakland now 31 turnovers on the year, tied with New England for the most. Second down and 10. Oakland 17 yard line. John Reeves for Houston. Tip, flag is down. Pass is intercepted. Oakland has the ball, but there was a flag on the play. Ted Hendricks has the interception at the 15 yard line. The ball had been tipped, but there was a marker on the play. Starting to get wild and woolly out there. Reeves going back to throw. Houston trying to protect him. The ball is tipped, as you can see right there. It goes through Burrell's hands into number 83, Ted Hendricks' hands. Being at the right spot at the right time. But there is a flag down on the play. Personal foul against the Oakland Raiders for a head slap. Automatic first down. Houston better take advantage of some of these opportunities they're getting because they've got some good breaks here early in the ball game. Unnecessary roughness, number 72 on the defense. Prior to the interception, first down. Called on Matuzak, who was a former number one draft choice of the Houston Oilers. Eight yard line, first down goal to go. I look for Mr. Earl Campbell to get his hands on the football on this first down situation. Surprise. He's got it. But Campbell gets only back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be second out goal. It'll go Ron Martin led the swarming defense of the Oakland Raiders. I don't know about that I formation. The I formation is designed for Earl Campbell because he can hit any hole that he wants once he gets the football. But when you're down inside the 10-yard line, you generally cannot be going sideways, which he was doing once he got the handoff, because the defense has an opportunity to get great penetration. I'm taking a look at that right now, what I'm talking about. Campbell gets the ball. Now he's going sideways. Gives him an opportunity. 53 is Martin. He made the tackle, whereas if he had been going straight ahead, he wouldn't have had the opportunity to make that tackle. Second and goal. Looping into the corner. Complete and a flag was dropped. Dave Casper, the intended receiver, Burgess Owens had the coverage on him. Dave Browning was putting the pressure on, and the official dropped the flag. We're having all kinds of things happening. I would say, I would say that it'd be a pretty good idea that number 23 Otis McKinney get away from the officials because you bump them, you're gone for the day. <laughs> and we have another conference. 3:33 is the time remaining. First quarter. Illegal motion, offsides, we'll have offsetting penalty. Eight yard line, it'll be second down goal to go. As I said, illegal motion on the tight end on offense, offside on the defense, they will offset second down. I was saying that Houston has been getting the breaks here in the first quarter. And when you get so many breaks, you better capitalize on those breaks. Because uh, they're going to even out generally in, in the in the long run when the game is in progress. Loops this from the Burrow incomplete. Trying to reach over Monty Jackson, the defender. It'll be third down and. If they miss here, of course, they will go with Tony Fritz, who has yet to miss a field goal attempt inside of 40 yards. 
this is a pattern that you get on the goal line because of the bump and run situation that the defensive man is not looking at the quarterback he's playing the receiver that ball was underthrown. a lot of times the receiver can't come up with it Reeves three of nine 23 yards through the air third down goal to go eight yard line defensive tackle by Matt Millen. Yes, sir. Matt Millen made an excellent stop there or Earl Campbell, I believe, would have been into the end zone. Here it is. Coming right at you. 55 is Matt Millen. Fisher slips and thus unable to put a block on him. And he makes that tackle. And had he not made the tackle, Campbell would have been into the end zone. Got only 11 yards rushing so far in six attempts. Tony Bridge, the most accurate, active kicker in the NFL. Almost 69 percent, and as I mentioned, has not missed from this distance. Not missed from inside of 40 yards. This will be from the 13 and a tip to 23. And he just punches at the ball. Watch how he kicks. Mike Reinfeld is the holder. Good hold, and it's right there. 23 yards away. It's ironic that number 16, Frisch, when he kicked the ball, there was 16 seconds on the 32nd clock. 2.34 left to go, first quarter, Houston leads. The preceding announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. Earl Campbell. Well, Raider defense has shut him down. Yes, but... You know, you can stop him and stop him and stop him, and then all of a sudden he just breaks a couple of tackles and breaks a big one. Tony Fritz will be kicking off with Arthur Whittington on the near side, Chester Willis on the far side. Check the scoreboard. New England leading Miami 7 0 first quarter. Also in the first quarter, Minnesota field goal ahead of Tampa Bay 3 0. Philadelphia St. Louis tied up 7 7. That's in the first quarter. Another first quarter score Washington 10, Detroit 0. Green Bay 17, the Giants nothing still in the first quarter. Wilson has completed one of eight passes for 19 yards, suffered an interception. That set up the field goal. Arthur Whittington is in as a running back. He goes to the 25 to the 28, a gain of three, so it'll be second down and seven. With that play, Oakland has a total of only 39 yards in total offense. The offensive left guard, number 60, is Kirk Marsh, a rookie out of Washington, replacing, uh, I guess you'd say, the legendary uh, Upshaw. Gene Upshaw going after the linebacker and making the block. What Oakland's trying to do is establish something, and they're trying it in the, on the ground. Here's Mark Van Egan in the ball game. Mark across the 35, close to the first down. Vernon Perry makes the tackle, and he may have picked it up. Number 60, Kurt Mark. Making a block on Hunt, the linebacker, pushing him to the inside, allowing number 30, Van Egan, the fullback, to go to the outside. Raiders have made the decision that this young man is the offensive left guard of the future for Oakland. Van Egan gets the call again. He'll pick up a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Ted Washington makes the tackle. Darrell Hunt was also there for the Oilers. Van Egan coming off of a leg injury. Last week picked up 34 yards. Suffered that injury in the third ball game of the season. Boy, it really, really hurts that that offense of the Oakland Raiders when Van Egan is not there. Yeah, I think Jansen has played fairly well, but Van Egan has been such a solid performer over the last several years for Oakland. And he's kind of like Earl Campbell. As Van Egan goes, so goes the Oakland Raiders on the ground. Wilson to throw. He's high, way over the head of Kenny King. putting the pressure on Wilson. Well, he put more than pressure on this young man. Number six is Mark Wilson, 54, out of Purdue University. Greg Bingham is blitzing 
trying to find uh, a gap to get to that quarterback. Look at him. He sees him now. He knows that he can get to him, and he nails him right after he gets rid of the football. Now he wants to bury him, and he says it's all completely legal. Arthur Whittington replaces King, so it's Whittington and Van Eken in the backfield. Third down and eight. Wilson to throw. Has pressure. He's going to scramble. Juggles the ball. Has the first down. Then he fumbles when he hits the ground. They'll rule the ball dead at that point. That is another rule book call. When you hit the ground with the ball in your possession, if it is then jarred loose, it is not a fumble. You have to fumble the ball before you hit the ground. This is a mobile young man here, and he escapes lightning a couple of times. Bingham 54 once again coming in. He's got that man. That's his, his man the back. Takes off. Ball is popping around. He's got good hands. Look at the concentration on the football. He picks up the first down, but he's going to have to learn to put that thing away. But he did have possession after the gain of 17 yards. Correctly ruled, not a fumble. Into the first quarter, Houston leads 3-0. Here is a tail end of that fumble, or it's not a fumble because he has possession of the ball when he hits the turf right there. When it bounces out after he hits the turf, it is not ruled a fumble. Charlie had just mentioned that is a rule book call. 45-yard line of Houston, first down open. Play action. Lots of time. Deep. Complete to branch. 25-yard line. A gain of 20 yards on the play. And a first down, they say no. He was going away from us. I thought he had possession held on. He did not. That Dimmick time, was there for Houston. It was an excellent throw by Mark Wilson because he had to get it above the outstretched arms of number 50, Darrell Hunt, the linebacker, and get it right to Branch. It's a good throw. He stays coolly in the pocket. You can see right there, up over the linebacker, and in between Hunt 50 and 52, Robert Brazil. But Cliff didn't hold on. Oakland scoreless in the first quarter. They have scored the fewest points this year in the AFC. The second fewest points in the NFL behind only New Orleans. Kenny King gets the call. It was second down and 10 from the Houston 45-yard line. He goes to the 38. That is what we were talking about. Oakland scoreless in the first quarter. Of course, Houston hasn't been scoring that many points either. They have the fourth fewest points in the AFC, but they did pick up three more in the first period to lead here. Oakland... They are not coming up with the big plays that they've been accustomed to for so many years. They're in a situation now, they're in a passing situation right now for the Oakland Raiders. Third down and four. Kenny King. King fumbles. Oakland recovers with the ball, then kicks loose again. An Oakland player reached out to pull it in. It was jarred loose and then recovered by a second Oakland player. Oakland, by the way, has the most fumbles in the AFC. I was going to say, I'm going to tell you, that's like they had grease on that football because you're going to see they're running on third and about four or five, which is unusual for Oakland. 33 is King, has the ball, and he is met by Reinfeldt, who kicks the ball loose. Now, Oakland has a chance to get it. I thought so Jensen had it. Now, what's the ball? Pop loose there. It's like the it's uh, got grease on it. Covered it, Kenny King, the man who started it off. So it's fourth and two. Ray Guy will be kicking his nine kicks. No, running kick, going for the corner. And that is the tenth time in the last two and a half games that he has punted the ball inside of the 20-yard line, his 18th time on the season. Shows you what a great athlete he really is. That was a high snap. He leaped up and made the reception taking off and he's going to kick it sideways and gets it out he can also throw he's their number three quarterback we've got a timeout we'll be back in a moment we're a minute and a half into the second quarter houston has the ball in their own 10 yard line they have the lead three nothing tony french 23 yard field goal the second back in the eye formation is earl campbell a gain of six to the 16 second and four that time Earl Campbell went straight ahead when he got the football he didn't he did not go sideways leading the way was uh, his running mate number 45 Tim Wilson got in the, into the hole and he's he's there from the I formation number 45 is to clean up to lead the way and just try to find a little gap for number 34 for Earl Campbell that time he did and they picked up good yardage second and four they do big turnover for the Raiders that 
is the first turnover by the Oilers. See who's at the bottom of the pile. 55, Matt Miller. Matt Miller. You get so many breaks during the course of the game, and they have a way of evening out. Houston got breaks in the first quarter. Now, Oakland has come up with a tremendous break in the second quarter, and they need to capitalize on it if they hope to win. Coming up next, the second half of today's NFL doubleheader, featuring the surprising Cincinnati Bengals versus the San Diego Chargers and the Cleveland Browns. Oh, going against the Denver Lions. Check your local listings for the game in your area as Kenny King carries from the 14-yard line, and he is hit at the line of scrimmage by Ted Washington. It will be second down and 10. And a big play for that defensive unit of Houston because they didn't make anything on first down, putting Oakland now in a passing situation. At least Houston feels that way because they're bringing in about four or five new defensive players, four-man front. They're looking for the pass. Kenny King goes in motion. Complete. He's going to Derek Ramsey, the tight end. So it will be third down and 10. Wilson not having that good of an afternoon. He's not having a good afternoon at all because he's not getting the ball to his receivers. He's been off a couple of times. The one time that he really threw a good pass to Cliff Branch, Cliff wasn't able to hold on to the ball. Wilson has completed only one of 11 passes, 19 yards, and an interception. I'd say that was not a very good. Not, That's terrible. Not an That's auspicious not start. <laughs> We're being very kind. They, they can, you know, they can all change with this play right here. If he can get it into the end zone. Arthur Whittington in the backfield, third down. Wilson's pass is complete to Cliff Branch. It'll only go for a couple of yards, maybe three. Mark at the 11-yard line. It'll be fourth down, and Chris Barr will come in to try and tie it up. And Mark did an outstanding job by that Houston defense. They, they had a terrible break. Started the ball on the 14-yard line. They haven't given up any points now, but if you get away with three points, giving up three points, you say to yourself, it's an outstanding job. For the 19, an attempt of 29 yards. Barr has hit three of five between the 20 and the 40. He's got this one, and we've got a tie ball game. Chris Barr splitting the uprights from 29 yards away. It is Oakland three and Houston three with just under 11 and a half left to go in the first half. Carl Roach is number 85 and Willie Tellis number 20. Two of the three top return men in the NFL. As Barr kicks off for the first time in the ballgame. Six yard line, Willie Tellis. Tell us, 25, 30, one man to go. Shakes him. Down the sideline and is cut. With the angle was number 35, Dwayne Osteen. There it is. Nine yards, five number nine of the return. Number 20 is Tellus getting it, gets a good block, and you're going to see Barr is going to be the last one that has a shot. He doesn't make the tackle, but he slows him up right here. That enables number 35, Dwayne Osteen, to catch up and knock him out of bounds. Otherwise, it's six points, but they're on the 35-yard line in excellent field position. First down. Renfro in motion. Little bobble on the snap from center. A flag is down. Gamble the ball carrier, but again, a bobble between the center, David Carter, and John Reeves. And the Oilers, one of the, uh, that's not, that's Carl Mock that's now the center. The Oilers, one of the least penalized teams in the NFL, having some problems in the first half. Man in motion, when the man is going in motion, he has to be going uh, parallel to the line or back away from the line of scrimmage. He can't be going forward. But you got a situation with Reeves, who hadn't played in a couple of years, and the, uh, the center Offside, and the, right guard, beat the snap. First down. The the center and the quarterback is like one. It has to be like one. There has to be a feeling there that you know exactly what, what is going to happen. Each quarterback is a little different. Reed, sideline pattern, tight end. First down. That was a 
was an excellent throw by John Reeves. He laid it over one man into the arms of number 87, Dave Casper, running the sideline pattern, just looking for the opening He's in that zone. He's there. You can see Casper looking around at the defensive men, and Matt Millen, 55, is trying to get to him. But it's an excellent throw by John Reeves. Lester Hayes coming up from the secondary. He couldn't get there. 17 yard line of open first down. 3 3 tie. The Oilers want a break. Earl Campbell, sweep left, goes to the left, reverses, slips one tackle, he fumbled. Ball is still loose. Ken Burrow diving for it. Houston retains possession. Well, I'll tell you, Ted Hendricks and the safety safety man Otis McKinney both were fighting over the ball it was loose there they tried to pick it up and I know Ted Hendricks is really angry that they didn't come up with that football the ball is going to be coughed up by number 34 Earl Campbell once again he's running sideways and makes a cut back the ball is jarred loose right there by that by Ted Hendricks now the two of them are fighting over and what happens they knock each other out of the way and eventually Oakland comes up with the football Second and 16 in Burrow with the recovery. 23-yard line is the line of scrimmage. Too much, Too much time. That'll be five yards. It'll be second and 21. Delay of game. Well, I'm sure on the sidelines, Tony Frisch is saying, wait a minute. Let's go the other way to give me a better opportunity of making a field goal attempt if I have to go in. A lot of mistakes in this ball game. Third time the Oilers have been penalized here in the first half. Total of 15 yards. The rookie from Oregon State, that is only his fourth reception of the season. He was dropped by Osteen. A good throw by Reeves also. He really fired that ball out there. New England leading Miami 10 to 3. It's now in the second quarter. And St. Louis. This could be another upset. 10 to 7 over Philadelphia. I remember last year, Philadelphia hadn't lost the game. St. Louis hadn't won one. St. Louis beat them. Third down and nine. 16-yard line. Breeze throws. Burrow has it. Five-yard line, first down. He got 11 yards. An offensive line's providing him with the opportunity to get back there and throw, and he really fires the ball. John Reeves, the quarterback, Steps and throws and really drills it right at the numbers of Kenny Burrow. Double O, first down, and they're threatening again. Ten hit for five yard line. Burrow now 23 receptions on the year, six for touchdown. That's 27% of his receptions have been scored. First down goal to go. It'll be Earl Campbell. A couple of yards. It'll be second down goal to go. <laughs> Matt Mellon, Burgess Owen at the Oakland Raider defense. And everybody else, and that he really, uh, he draws the crowd. Number 34, Earl Campbell, really takes a, a beating when he's out there playing because look at the number of black uniforms, the black jerseys there. Burgess own 44. Everybody's coming up because they know going into this game that one man is not going to stop Earl Campbell. So consequently, it gives him that much more incentive to gang tackle. Campbell's rushing record. Eight carries, 15 yards in this game. Second down goal to go three-yard line. Campbell again. About half a yard, and that would be off. John Reed so far has completed six of 12 for 70 yards throwing. Ted Hendricks led the defense. Market for no gain, third down goal to go. The head Biles coach, now Tom Flores, the head coach. Next to him is Willie Brown. Waving his arm, one of the all-time great defensive backs in the National Football League. And a stable. All he can do right now is walk. 
Campbell, the remaining back. This is a passing formation. Armstrong in motion. Play action. Into the corner. because I think of his strength. Lester Hayes is able to hold him from getting into the end zone. And the Oilers do take a timeout to make the decision. We'll be back with their answer in a moment. And now the answer to your question. The Oilers will go for it. I'm surprised. Seemingly will go for it. I say that because they could hit a long count hoping to draw them outside, but that won't do any good anyway because they have a yard. They're going for it, and the only one that's carried the ball so far in this game for Houston has been number 34, Earl Campbell. And he's the remaining back, and he has the ball, and he... Into the end zone. Fifth touchdown of the year for Campbell. Burgess Owen had the shot at him, couldn't bring him down. 35 yards on the drive, nine plays. That was set up by Willie Tellis' 59-yard kickoff return. Sometimes you guess right. The only man that's carried the ball for Houston in this ball game is 34, Earl Campbell. The only one that shot at him is 44, Burgess Owens coming up right there. He's stumbling a little bit. It's all over now. Earl's into the end zone. That's the most daylight he's seen so far in the ball game today. So that, that call, I was surprised at the call too, to tell you the truth, because they hadn't made anything running the ball extra point is good and the oilers lead by seven ten to three we have 658 left to go in the second quarter we'll be back in a moment they're celebrating in the astrodome as tony fritch will now be kicking off Arthur Whittington and Chester Willis are the deep backs on the return for the Oakland Raiders. Arthur Whittington, formerly of SMU. 20, 25, 30. Good return for Arthur. To the 36-yard line. Avon Riley makes the tackle. 33 yards of the return. Let's go to New York City. Okay, Charlie, thank you. In Foxborough, the Patriots have padded their lead against the Dolphins. Steve Grogan going around the right side. Don McNeil stamps his ticket, but not until Grogan breaks the plane. It's 17-3. Charlie? All right, thank you, Brian. Did he say Don McNeil of the Breakfast Club? No. <laughs> well, you know, it shows you the special teams, how important they are with that, that big return by Houston, giving them an opportunity to score a touchdown. Which is to Kenny King. Out of bounds. He'll go out at the 37. He picks up one. It'll be second down and nine. Bingham was the man chasing him. This game is important. The coach has made a decision with the score just three to three to go for seven instead of taking the three points when they hadn't really been doing anything on the ground. Out to the outside, Earl Campbell for the touchdown. Both teams have to win this football game. And both teams cannot, as you well know. So the team that wins is the team that has the shot at the playoffs. I think the team that loses is virtually out. Jim Plunkett on the sideline, one of the finest young men in America. He hurts a bit, but he wants encouragement for this man. His quarterback, Wilson, pass is complete after the scramble. He goes to the tight end, Derek Ramsey, and scrambles for the first down as Vernon Perry makes the tackle after a gain of 16. Excellent play by Mark Wilson, scrambling. He was not only scrambling and moving away from the defensive men, but he was looking downfield to see if anybody was open. That is Art Shell. He's been bothered by a knee injury. Lindsey Mason has been his replacement. And they're checking him out. Line of scrimmage, the Houston 46-yard line. First down open. Just over six and a half left to go in the first half. flag is down 30 25 20 out of bounds around the 12 and another flag is dropped the second flag could be for a face mask i believe that's true the second one is for that but and two other flags were dropped near the line of scrimmage 
A gain of 34 yards and then the conference. I don't believe any of the officials have any yellow flags in their pocket. They're all over the field. Regardless of what happened, that was really an outstanding run and a big play by Derek Jensen and the Oakland Raiders. But they are moving back toward the original line of scrimmage. Jensen comes out for a breather. Mark Van Egan will replace him. Chuck Heberling, the referee, he'll give us the word. Unnecessary roughness, number 32 defense, uh, holding number 50 offense. They will offset. We will play the down over. I say you have to have a, you have to be a memory <laughs> expert to be an official to remember who did what. All right, here's the play. 31 Jensen breaking through. First hole that uh, Oakland or either team has seen all day, and he breaks to the outside. The foot race is on now. They did call. 32, Vernon Perry right there with unnecessary roughness, hitting him out of bounds. Down goes over, Mark Van Eker. Van Egan to the 44, he has two, it'll be second down and eight. Let's go to Brian Gumbel. Well, Charlie, you had that great kickoff return by Willie Tullis in the game in Houston. Here's one to rival it from Foxborough. This is Fulton Walker, a rookie out of West Virginia, taking the ball deep in his own end, bringing it back 53 yards. Miami in business in the second period, but still trailing the Patriots 17-3. Charlie? All right, thank you, Brian. Here the Oilers lead by seven. Four-man defensive front with Doris, Gensley, Scottstad, and Baker for Houston. Second and eight. Wilson to throw. Incomplete. Ramsey, the intended receiver holding against the Houston Oilers. Vernon Perry had the coverage where they get the Oakland Raiders. Penalties thus far, Houston has three, Oakland one. Those are penalties that have been accepted. Wilson going back to throw and he's looking downfield to his tight end. Good coverage by 32, Vernon Perry almost comes up with the interception. But they're going to bring it back. A lot of penalties here all, oh, all yeah. of a sudden. Seems like every player, every other play there is a penalty. Holding, offense, number 71, second down. Holding on Lindsey Mason. Who has replaced Dart Shell at that offensive tackle spot? Arthur Whittington back in the backfield. Ed Biles, the head coach of Houston. That is only the fifth penalty that's been accepted. We've had about 15 calls, but it feels like. It is second and 18. Wilson screen. Van Egan. 45 yard line of Houston. He'll pick up about 10. Greg Bingham makes the tackle. He almost left his offensive guard, Mickey Marvin. I was just going to say, Mark, you know better than that. Wait for that big lineman to get out front. This is a screen pass, letting the defensive lineman come in and then just dumping it out to Van Egan. And they get to the quarterback, and the offensive lineman is supposed to be out in front. Now 65 is Mickey Marvin, and he leaves him, but he stops. He's smart enough to know I better stop and let him come out and get a block and give me some help. At least it got it back now where they're about nine yards short of the first down on third down. Third down and nine. Chandler is in as a receiver. Three wide receivers. Wilson has to throw it away. Nearest man was Brad. But Wilson was really throwing it away. Third and nine, Ray Guy will come in to catch. At least it showed me one thing. This is a flick of his wrist. He fired that ball about 40 yards to throw it away. In average, Ray Guy coming in the game of 44.8 tied for second. That is in the National Football League. Oakland just does not seem to get things going. I mean, they're, they they don't they haven't been establishing anything, and that's I'm sure one of the reasons that they haven't been scoring all year long. Carl Roaches and Willie Tellis set for the return oh. is to the up. The gamble. Mark Van Egan, the up back. And the Oilers hold and take over on now. Well, they've got a gamble. I just got through saying how it's... ...important this football game is. If Oakland loses this game, I think they're out of it. And they were looking for it. John Corker, number 57, was right there for Houston. 
Big play by Corker. He was coming to the inside on the slant. Came up with the play as Tom Flores, the head coach, Milton Raiders looking on. He knows how important this football game is. And be with us at halftime, of course, Brian Gumbel in New York City. We'll be giving you all the scores, updates around the National Football League. Earl Campbell with the reception and the stiff arm and the first down. Lester Hayes finally stopped him again of 60. Ted Hendricks had a shot at him. This is why you want to get the ball out to Earl Campbell and let somebody make an open field tackle. Here it is. He's just an outlet man. He catches the ball. Now it's open field. 83. Er, 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 Ted Hendricks is coming up trying to make an open field tackle. And with your hands, you're not going to bring this man down. Earl Campbell has been the offense so far for the Houston Oilers. In the second quarter, Houston has run now 18 plays, and Earl Campbell has been involved in 15 of the 18. And he is the only one to run with the football so far. And just about the only one to receive it, too. <laughs> Probably saying to himself, isn't there anybody else out here? And Earl Campbell is down. I noticed the last time, uh, or the last series, he came off the field very slowly. Bear in mind, he had a hamstring injury coming into this ball game. That was in the first half of the Cincinnati game a week ago. Taking a look at the replay, Earl Campbell from the I formation straight ahead, and he does attract a crowd. Even his own men are falling over him. That's, I believe, uh, 45 is Tim Wilson. He picked up four yards on the play. It will be second down and six. Campbell, 60 yards total offense, 20 rushing, 40 receiving. He needed 86 yards, I believe, coming in. 86 yards coming into this ball game to reach 1,000 yards for the fourth consecutive year. And this is his fourth year. You can hear the people, their reaction. They're happy because he's up and walking off the field. I think probably what Earl is saying is, too, there's a lot of unnecessary hitting you know, when I'm carrying that football. And he was talking to the officials. I know that he's complained about this earlier during the course of the year. But they're taking some unnecessary shots at him. But unfortunately for Earl Campbell, he's so good that to bring him down, you almost have to take unnecessary shots. He called them cheap shots. <laughs> you cleaned his act up a little, didn't you? Second and six, 36 yard line of open. Just over three and a half minutes left to go, first half. Houston leading by 7, 10, 3. Reeves fires on target complete. Mike Winfro has the first down at the 25-yard line. A gain of 11. Monty Jackson with the tackle. Once again, John Reeves putting a lot of zip on that ball. It's a good throw. Renfro, eight receptions last week, a career high. Second quarter, New England leading Miami 17-6. Also, second period, Minnesota hit a Tampa Bay 13 to nothing. Philadelphia has come back now. They're leading St. Louis 14 to 10. And even more important, Earl Campbell is back in the ballgame. And he picks up three. And he's getting up rather slowly once again. He does draw the crowd, doesn't he? He really does. John Matusak makes the tackle at the 22 yard line. Number 83, Ted Hendricks. Now 87 on Houston's team. Casper is trying to hook him, trying to get a hold of him, but you can see right there that Hendricks has control of the tight end. Casper turns the play in, doesn't permit Earl Campbell to get outside. Reeves has completed 8 of 14 for 98 yards. Campbell leads to the 20, so he has two more yards. Detroit is coming back. They're leading Washington 21 to 13 in the second quarter. And the Giants are coming back, but they're still down. Green Bay 20 to 14, that's in the second quarter. And the two-minute warning is given here. We've got a timeout. Houston 10, Oakland 3. We'll be back to the Astrodome in just a moment. Has been a great deal of scoring, one touchdown, and this is the touchdown. Fourth down, one yard to go. Houston decided to go for it. 
They give the ball to the right man, number 34, Burgess Owens, 44 of Oakland had a shot at him, but Earl Campbell walks into the end zone. Two Carl. minutes remaining, 10 to three, Houston leading. Carl Mock is the offensive center for the Houston Oilers. David Carter was scheduled to start. They'll go from the shotgun here at third and five. We'll come back to the mock story in a moment. Reeves throws. It is low, but catchable and caught. 15-yard line by Ronnie Coleman. Monty Jacks was there. Should be the first down. Just enough for that first down. Holding his call against the Oilers, so forget it. Ronnie Coleman, number 47, gets just enough for the first down. He goes deep enough. But he knows he's looking at the yard markers to see how far he has to go. But they're going to bring it back. He's going to have to do it all over again. Only they're going to have to add some more yardage, 10 more yards to it. It'll be 15 yards to go. Holding, holding, offense number 55, third down. Well, the man that we wanted to talk <laughs> about is Carl Mock, number 55. Probably the reason, that's the second half of the doubleheader coming up next featuring the surprising Cincinnati Bengals versus the San Diego Chargers and the Cleveland Browns will be taking on the Denver Broncos. So check your local listings for the game in your area coming up next. They gave me the wrong games. I'll try and clean that up and give you the Carl Mark story. And we'll have time because Earl Campbell picks up the first down. Gain of 17, Burgess Owens and Dwayne Osteen with the tackle. 13-yard line. Now, these are the right games. Cincinnati at San Diego, Cleveland at Denver, Pittsburgh at Seattle. Here's the play. They did not get into the shotgun, which is an indication they're going to give the ball to number 34, Earl Campbell. And look at him run. Burgess Owens is just holding on. It's like you, you see at a rodeo in a, with the calf there. They're just trying to hold on. Green throw. Yes, it is caught by Mike Renfro. A diving catch. Body Jackson then pulls him down. And they ought to do something because the clock is still moving. 49 and counting. Time remaining. Five-yard line. Oilers have one timeout left. This is where it really hurts that you can't call an automatic at the line of scrimmage. You should have had two plays called in the, in the huddle. You wasted a lot of time, 30 seconds remaining. Reeves throws far side, knocked away. Good defensive play by Monty Jackson. That stops the clock with 25 seconds left. Guess you thought I forgot. Let me just slip that Carl Mock story. Tell us about Carl Mock, will you? Carl Mock, number 55 is the backup center. Well, Reeves is the backup quarterback, and so they had the snap down, as you mentioned earlier, so important between the center and the quarterback. That is the reason that Mock is in with Reeves starting. Plus the fact that Mock can, he's a leader out there, he's a veteran. He can help calm down not only the offensive line, but also John Reeves, the quarterback. He can assure him that he's going to get him the ball and not worry about him missing the snap. Earl Campbell. Campbell is stacked up at the line of scrimmage, the five-yard line. Campbell now 45 yards in 16 carries. And the clock moving, 14. Well, they're going to let it run down, I'm sure, till a couple of seconds, then they'll call timeout, so that all that's going to be left is this kick, that Oakland will not have any time after. Taking their last timeout. With five seconds left. Tony Fritz hitting from 23 yards away earlier. He's lining it up to see him lining it up. <laughs> I didn't know that's where you're supposed to do it. <laughs> he has not missed inside of 40 yards, the most accurate kicker in the NFL. In his career, he has hit 69% of his field goal attempts. And now we found out he's a great receiver. That's right. Early in the first half when John Reeves was throwing the football away, number 16, Tony Fritz came up with a big reception. Got it with his stomach, <laughs> didn't he? <laughs> right. 
So the Oilers won a 10-point bulge at halftime over the Oakland Raiders. Mike Reinfeldt will hold 12-yard line to kick a 22-yard. David Carter with the snap. The kick is up. It is no good. Fritch misses from 22 yards away. Missable, of course, but with Tony Fritch, you just expected to make those. I don't think he can believe that he missed one from this distance. He did slip a little bit. Look at him backing up. A little body English there doesn't help too much, Tony. One second left on the clock. Blame it on the hole. You held for Jan Stenerud for so many years, so you know right. that. Looks like a good hold. He popped it up there, and it just hooked on him. It hooked on him a little bit. Caromed off the left upright. Of course, Stenerud didn't miss that many either, did he? No, he didn't. If, if, uh, if anybody's going to hook a ball, it's going to be the sidewinder. And so the Raiders run out the clock in the first half. The gun's down. It is halftime in the Astrodome. With the score, the Houston Oilers 10 and the Oakland Raiders 3. Not that much offense in the first half, but a ball game that both Oakland and Houston must win. The loser will be out of playoff contention. Stay with us for halftime in the second half. Here are the statistics. Well, you take a look at the stats. Well, high total yards, 148 to 111. The Oilers leading in that to that department but really there hasn't been much continuity going Earl Campbell's gained just a few yards and he has had to work and earn those two yards second half I think the team that that's going to win is going to be the team that's going to be able to throw the football Carl Roach is number 85 Willie Tullis number 20 set to return the kickoff excellent return man number one and number three in the NFL here's Carl Roaches Roaches 30 yards on the return to the 30-yard line. Todd Christensen is the man who brought him down. Here is the offense. Reeves, Wilson, and Campbell. Really, you just need to mention Campbell. Burr, Renfro, and Casper, the receivers. And that offensive line, Gray Schumacher, Mark Fisher in town. Houston from their own 30-yard line, first down. Renfro in motion. Quick screen to Renfro. Has a block. And he has five yards. Ted Hendricks makes the tackle. Here's the defense of the Oakland Raiders. Matuzak, Robinson, and Browning, the four linebackers, are... Hendricks, McClanahan, Matt Mellon, Rod Martin, and in the secondary. You will see these men, hey, Jackson, McKinney, and Owen. Second and five, 35-yard line. Earl Campbell. Campbell to the 39. He has four. It'll be third down and one. Rod Martin makes the tackle. In the first half, John Reeves completed nine of 16 for 103 yards. He threw some nice passes, though, Charlie. There's a couple of them he really got back there and fired that ball, and he had to in order to complete them. But the man that's carried the load, number 34, Earl Campbell. 47 yards on 17 rushes. It's been tough out there going against a very good Oakland defense, and they're all stacked up there now. First half, he was also the Oilers' leading receiver. First half. Five yards to the 44. Johnny Robinson with the tackle. Oakland had about eight men up and near that line of scrimmage. Number 68 is Johnny Robinson. He's a rookie. And he's getting turned, and when you get turned like that, you create a hole. The hole is there, and Earl Campbell goes through it. David Carter, number 58, making a fine block. Burgess Owens has come out of the secondary. Osteen has replaced him. Reeves throws. Incomplete. Overthrowing Ken Burrow. 
He had to throw it over 53, the linebacker of the Oakland Raiders, Martin. And it had to be a delicate shot to, to get it over him and into the arms of Kenny Burrow. And I'm sure what he did not want to do was underthrow the ball. Here, coming, you're taking a look at uh, what it looks like. 53, as you see in your picture, is Martin. Double O is Kenny Burrow. Second and ten. He throws it is dropped. A low pass. Casper had a shot at it. It was catchable, but he couldn't pull it in. Matt Millen was there. It'll be third down ten. Millen uh, must. Uh, his assignment must be Casper because he's been following him all over the field wherever he goes. <laughs> dogging him and he's generally about a step behind that time the pass is thrown a little bit behind Dave Casper but most of the time Casper comes up with those catches Houston has converted four of their previous eight third down opportunities but this is third down and ten slot right side from the shotgun Reeves throws it is almost intercepted Oh, my, Dwayne Osteen, the fifth man in the secondary for the Raiders, just dropped six he, points. He read that that all the way. He had a shot at it. If he got all of the, the football right now, cuts in front of Renfro. The ball is right in front of him, bounces off of his hands, and there was no one down the sidelines except the big offensive lineman. And I do believe that Osteen would be capable of outrunning them. You don't get that many opportunities. That's what that's what changes games around. Plays like that. He'd intercepted and gone in for a touchdown. Cliff Parsley will be kicking to Ted Watt. Oh, that's a beauty. Deal it at the nine yard line. Watt has one block. And that's all. He has spun under at about the 14, a 46 yard kick, five yards on the return, and number 52, Robert Brazil, is the man who spun him down. You can see, look at him smiling. You can see Robert Brazil smiling that even though you're a veteran, you still love to get out on special teams and make the plays. We're two and a half minutes into the second half. Leon Gray, a little uh, equipment repair on the sideline. Oakland, first time on offense, second half. They have been outscored more than two to one in the second half. They've been outscored 51 points to only seven points in the third quarter this year. Ramsey, the tight end, coming across the middle. From the 14, the line of scrimmage to about the 22, where Bingham makes the tackle. Gain of eight, it'll be second down in a couple. This is the backfield for the Oakland Raiders. Wilson, Jensen, and King. Branch, Chandler, and Ramsey are now the receivers, and that offensive line. Shell, Marsh, Dalby, Marvin, and Lawrence as we start the second half. Second down and two, Oakland their own 22-yard line. They trail by seven points. Kenny King, first down, and more. 40, 30. Kenny King breaks the big play, 51 yards for the Oakland Raiders to the 22-yard line of Houston. Talking about Oakland not having the big plays, this is a big play. Kenny King breaking through all good blocking by that offensive line. Now it is a foot race, and number 22, Bill Kay, is eventually going to overtake him. Now, I know that Kenny King has excellent speed, so it must mean that number 22, Bill Kay of Houston, has outstanding speed to, to run him down. Save the touchdown. 22-yard line, Arthur Whittington comes in. Whittington gets the call on the draw. He goes to the 18-yard line, has four. It'll be second down and six. Ken Kennard makes the tackle. Let's look at the basic Oiler defense. Three fours, they go with it. Up front, we will see. Doris Kennard and Bethea. Brazil, Bingham, Hunt, and Washington, the linebackers. And in the secondary, the only change has been at cornerback as Bill Kay is in for J.C. Wilson. Second and six, 18-yard line. Jensen. Derek is close to the first down. He may have it about the 12-yard line. Daryl Hunt and Greg Bingham make the tackle. 
You're asking me what they could do uh, to get things turned around. They've got to establish something. Oakland hadn't been doing anything in the first half, running or passing with the football. And here it is, Jensen gets the ball, and he gets nailed there by 32 is Vernon Perry, but he did not stop. He kept moving, kept those legs driving, and picked up a first down for Oakland, and they're very much in scoring uh, territory right now. He also bumped Arthur Whittington <laughs> out of the way. <laughs> get out of the way. Yeah. First down, 12-yard line. to 15, a loss of three. Andy Doris brought him down. An excellent play by Andy Doris. With that loss now, that puts Oakland in a situation now where they're going to they're going to have to put that ball up in the air. And we have an injury timeout. Number 50, Daryl Hunt. 9:24 is the time remaining. In the third quarter, Houston has the lead, but the Raiders threat will be back in a moment. Today is a doubleheader day on NBC, so stay with us across the country. Coming up, the second half of the doubleheader, you'll see the Cincinnati against San Diego, Cleveland and Denver, Pittsburgh at Seattle. It is second and 13. Oakland has the ball at the 15-yard line of Houston. In total offense now, the Raiders 168 yards, the Oilers 160. Flag is down. Wilson throws, he under throws everybody, but there was a marker on the play. It was Oakland. They were moving before the snap. I think it was the receiver. I don't know whether it's Cliff Branch or not, but somebody was moving prior to the snap. We mentioned this fact earlier. The Raiders have scored only one touchdown in the third quarter all year long and only one touchdown in the second half of their last six games. They, the their defense has been outscored two to one. One of the reasons is their defense has been on the field a lot. Illegal motion, half. offense, number 21, refuse, third down. You're right, it was Cliff Branch. He was in the slot, he was moving before the, uh, the count. The ball was snapped. So regardless of what, what would have happened, it was all in the favor of Houston. If they hoped had caught that football, it wouldn't have counted. The Oilers got it, it's there. Kenny King is back in the backfield. He had the big run just a moment ago. He joined Derek Jensen. But it is third and 13. That is a passing situation. Flag is down. And Mark Wilson is down. Stensrud got him. If it stands up, that's the first sack of the ball game. Holding on Oakland. It'll be refused. They'll take the sack, I'm sure. Holding. Offense number 65. Refuse. Fourth down. Holding call on Mickey Marvin. We'll take a look. Excellent coverage by the Houston defensive unit. You take a look. Number 65. You saw the right of your screen. Andy Doris was going down, and now you saw the yellow flag flying right down, too. And now Mickey's looking around at the bottom there. 42-yard field goal attempt by Chris Barr. And it is good from 42 yards out. Barr, the only scoring for the Oakland Raiders. They pull within four. It is Houston 10 and Oakland 6. We'll be back in a moment. Fire will be kicking up. Trying to break up the rhythm of the return man. This is Carl Rocha to the 20, 25. And then written out of bounds around the 32-yard line. Frank Hawkins is the man who got him. Next week on NBC Sports World, two up-and-coming middleweights square off in Atlantic City. Undefeated power puncher Alex Ramos meets the aggressive Norberto Sabater in a 10-round bout. Plus, you'll see a battle of biceps if some strong-willed women meet in World Professional Wrist Wrestling. That's all next Saturday at 4 o'clock Eastern Time on NBC Sports World. Houston from their own 32. Earl Campbell. Campbell to the 36-yard line, a gain of four. It'll be second down and six. Charlie just got a report that J.C. Wilson, the defensive back for Houston, has a dislocated elbow. Ooh. They also say he may be back. 
Uh, he's got to be some kind of tough guy. And we'll come back to that. I can understand the first part of the report. The second part I can't understand. Well, Earl Campbell now 19 carries for 58 yards. Kenny King has eight carries for 75 yards. Of course, he broke the big one at 56 yards. Here's Campbell. 40-yard line. So he adds four more to his totals. It'll be third down and two. A reminder, all season long, you haven't had a chance to read that, so I'll let you read it. This time. All right, I'll do it. Okay. Tel this telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and it is intended for the private use. And you're going to see 53. <laughs> you see what Earl Campbell is? He is a load, as they say. And this uh, broadcast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Houston Oilers and the National Football League is prohibited. Well done. I like the way that you worked, uh, <laughs> worked the replay in there with it. Here's Earl Campbell going for the first down. And he does not get it. A flag is down. Rod Martin makes the tackle. Short of the first down, but there were flags. And I'm surprised he was a he must be he's not that large Martin is it but he was able to bring down Earl Campbell by grabbing him Well, he grabbed the face mask I think is, uh, <laughs> is that how he got <laughs> down because he weighs about 210 to 15 pounds and Earl Campbell is larger than 53 Rod Martin Casper trying to make the block on him push him away do anything he can now here it is right oh, oh I see man. how why he brought him down it was because of the face mask. and if you notice can we look First at that again foul. Face because they march off 15, 15 yards. yards the reason Number being is he turned his defense. head normally on a face mask if you catch it and the head doesn't turn it's five yards you turn the head or twist it it's 15. you're going to see it coming up right now now he twists it look at earl campbell's head goes around that's probably why earl is so adamant about the late hits that he's been getting this year first down at the oakland 44 yard line here's campbell 41 yard line Second down and seven as we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC Television Network. KPRC TV, Channel 2, Houston. This is Charlie Jones, Lynn Dawson. The Astrodome in Houston, Texas with 6.57 and counting. We're in the third quarter. It is Houston leading by four, 10 to six. And the team that loses here today, they both have four or five records could well write off any opportunity of going into the playoffs. On the pitch, Campbell drops it, and Randy McClanahan has it. That is the second turnover by the Houston Oilers. The Raiders have won. Pitch out to Earl Campbell. It looked like it was a good pitch. He should have had it. But the problem is, Earl is having to do all of the work offensively. We'll be back in just a moment. Four yards on the play. It'll be second and six. Kennard and Bethay with the tackle. Up to 50, so it'll be second down and seven. Just over six minutes left to go in the third quarter. Mark Van Egan. They'll mark the ball dead at the 47-yard line, so he has three. It'll be third down and four. He takes a terrific pounding every time he carries the football. 66. Done what everybody else has done. We'll that's, get to that in a that's moment. That's not what you call variety, is it? No, it really isn't. Third down and four. Mark Wilson to throw. Sideline pass is there. It is caught and out of bounds is Morris Bradshaw. And he's got the first down at the 40-yard line of Houston. Where the play is going. Oh, Earl Leggett is the defensive line coach. First down, Houston 40. Out of the backfield is Mark Van Egan. Close to the 30-yard line. And close to the first down as Daryl Hunt and Greg Bingham make the tackle. Second down and about a foot. Little play action. Lots of time. Dropped over the middle. Out of the backfield is Van Egan. First down. Dead Washington makes the tackle. That's where play action... Receivers put wide to the near side. Blitz is on. Caught at the 14-yard line by Bob Chandler. Bill Kay wrestles him down. The blitz was on that time. Chandler coming up with right now. We're taking a look at the replay. You see that Ryan felt the safety's coming in. Van Egan meets him right there. The pass is thrown, and I might add that number 30 Van Egan is still down on the field as you're taking a look at number eight. Him just kind of rounding back into shape. They thought he might be able to start. Ted Thompson has replaced Daryl Hunt as a linebacker for Houston. 
just inches to go. And then they, kept, they kept getting out of rhythm, so they went to letting Mark calling his own plays, except in certain specific situations. First down as Derek Jensen picks it up. Two yards to the 12, so it's first and 10 at the Houston 12-yard line. 29th consecutive sellout in Houston. Arthur Whittington has room. Heads for the corner. Diving into the end zone. They say yes. Touchdown for Arthur Whittington. That is his first touchdown of the year. And it covered 12 yards. This is what speed will do for you. Jensen making a block, number 31. Downfield, number 21. Branch making a block. Now it's a foot race to the uh, corner, and he does get inside. I know that number 54, Bingham, was quite upset, but he wasn't upset with the call. He was upset with the fact that he was able, that Whittington was able to jump outside, and he's going to win that foot race. Did you say it got very, very quiet all of a sudden here at the Astrodome. Extra point. It is good. The Oakland Raiders out in front of the Houston Oilers. With 2.51 left to go in the third. It is now a 13 to 10 ball game. We'll be back with a kickoff. I had here, Oakland leads 13 to 10. That last drive covered 53 yards in eight plays. And Scott and all recovering the fumble of Earl Kemp on the kickoff. It is really tough. Tullis to the 20, Tullis to the 30, flag is down. Tullis is down at the 40. Flag is dropped now at the 26-yard line. Ted Watts makes the tackle, 37 yards on the return, but it will be a holding call against the Houston Oilers. Chris Barr did not like that kick. Now, he wanted to squib kick it. He didn't want to kick a line drive because what they talk about in kicking today is hang time. That had no hang time. That was a line drive to one of the two best return specialists in the, in the league. You don't want to do that. You want to get it up in the air or swim it along the ground. On the return, number 22, first down. Holding on Bill K. So it will be a first down Houston on their own 16 yard line. Mark Van Egan getting that knee tape that he came out of the ball game with moments ago. Here's Earl Campbell, the Houston offense today. Five yards to the 21. It'll be second down and five. And where do they go again? They go right back to Earl Campbell, and he is down, hurting once again. 87 is Casper blocking on the linebacker, number 53, Rod Martin. Keeping his feet, trying to keep contact with that man long enough for his back to make a move in or out, and that's exactly what he did. Casper indicating why he's one of the top tight ends in the National Football League, because one of the reasons is great blocking ability. Jim Plunkett on the phone for the Oakland Raiders. Second and five, Houston. Play action. That's the way. Randy McClanahan, who recovered that fumble a moment ago, number 57, is the man who batted the ball away just after it left the hand of John Leonard on NBC. So stay with us throughout the afternoon for more exciting NFL football. Third down and five. From the shotgun, Reeves is sacked. Ted Hendricks got him. That is the first sack for Oakland in the 37th on the year. Why you don't want to get into a passing situation. Number 87 is Casper taking a look, and, and Ted Hendricks gets to the outside, beats Casper to the outside, and gets to the quarterback and the sack. And what it also means is that Oakland will have excellent field position after the kick of Cliff Parsley. That last play gave you an indication of the how valuable number 83 Ted Hendricks is to a football team. He can do so many things. He can change games around. Blocking kicks. Sacking quarterbacks, intercepting passes. Snap of David Carter. Watts takes it, 49-yard line. And he returns about 13 yards to the... Oakland goes to work at the Houston 39-yard line. Wilson stands in, pass is complete. First down as he goes to his tight end, Derek Ramsey. 27-yard line of Houston. Bill Kay makes the tackle. Boy, since 
J.C. Wilson had a dislocated elbow. Bill Cage replaced him, number 22, left cornerback for Houston. <laughs> Mark Wilson has gone right after him. Well, he really wasn't looking at him originally. He was looking at the other side, but it's a cool customer, this young man, number six, Mark Wilson. He went to his secondary receiver and got the ball to him. a couple of yards to the 25 it'll worry about getting a playoff right now they're three points ahead with 17 16 seconds remaining that's they're going to stay in, in the huddle they'll wait till the, the end of the third quarter and start the fourth quarter the other end of the field and Oakland scored 10 points in the third quarter first time that they have done that this year that is the end of the third the score is Oakland 13 Houston 10 we'll be right back after these messages from your local he had a cast on it second down and eight King stumble as he took the handoff. He got uh, the 25, so that's about a half a yard on the play. It'll be still third down and eight. Ken Kennard is the man who covered it. Mark Wilson in the second half is perfect. Six for six in the third quarter, 47 yards passing. They're giving him more time to throw the football, and he's surveying the defense, and a couple of times he went from his primary receiver to his secondary receiver, which gives an indication he knows the passing game pretty good for a young quarterback. Bruce Davis is now the offensive right tackle. Three wide receivers are in. He fires this one, and he fires it behind Bradshaw. Now let's check out scores of other games. Minutes field goal now for the Oakland Raiders. From 43 yards away. And it is good from 43 yards out. So Chris Barr in the game is now three out of four. And the Oakland Raiders stretch their lead. 16 to 10. We'll be back with a kickoff. And for Houston, they got to put the ball in here. There's a squib kick that Barr was looking for, not the line drive. Return picked up at the 10 yard. That's what they wanted. Only an 11 yard return for the Houston Oilers because this one by Willie Tellis, because the return men, Tellis and Carl Roaches, have been so strong. And the Hill was the man who was down there. Brian, I just told you 20 to 17. Miami has taken over the lead against New England third quarter. Philadelphia extending their lead over St. Louis now in the third quarter, 31 to 10. Houston now trailing by six. Oakland out in front, 16 to 10. Oilers at their own 21-yard line. Howard Long is in on defense for the Oakland Raiders. Earl Campbell. Campbell to the 27, maybe the 28-yard line. Rod Martin makes the tackle. It'll be second down and about three. Certainly giving him a workout, aren't they? Boy, he has. 76 yards rushing, 40 yards receiving. He needs only 10 more yards rushing to reach the 1,000-yard mark for the fourth time in his four-year career in the National Football League. Campbell should pick up the first down. He's going to get it. Oakland's going to make him earn those last 10 yards the way that uh, they're playing defense out there. Earl Campbell really hasn't seen much daylight with the exception of the touchdown that he, that he made when it was fourth and one. Otis McKinney and Howard Long on the tackle. For Earl he's, Campbell, he's going for his 29th 100-yard game. That is Todd Christensen, the number three tight end. He also, number 46 broken, also snaps on the punt, which is kind of interesting for a tight end to handle that short. Reeves going deep to Renfro, and he overthrows it. Play. Hey. Not the year that he had last year. Only two interceptions. Uh, what if they, <laughs> take it? they took the stick of away from old Lester? I wonder if that is. Ken Burns said it also has affected his receiving because uh, he liked to use it also. Third down and ten. Far side, and he's there. First down, 43-yard line. Mike Holstein, second reception of the ball game and only his fifth of the year for this number three draft choice from Morgan State. He was Houston's first pick in the third round. Reeves going back to throw, and he fires this one. 
He was going to have to learn not to jump off his feet because you can get shots like this. And on that side of the field, Osteen made that shot on the receiver. It's the wrong side of the field to make that because over there are all Houston Oilers. No friends over there at all. Houston on their own 43-yard line. Earl Campbell. Flag is down. Campbell goes to the 47-yard line. It'll be holding. Illegal use of the hand. Number 58 offense. They are now First to the down. center. 20. Houston at their own 33. Slot right side. Campbell on the draw. 38-yard line, Earl has five, so it'll be second and 15. Randy McClanahan makes the tackle. A more yards, but as it is, he now has 1,001 yards. Now, that's he's been in the league. This is his fourth year, and I believe there are a few games remaining during this season. That's right. There's six more six after to today. And here it is. The fourth 1,000-yard season in a row for number 34, Earl Campbell. And 87 it, yards rushing today thus far. Reeves throws, and it is caught at the 49-yard line by Ken Burrow, Oakland Territory, couple of yards shy of the first down. Now we're getting some noise from the crowd here at the Astrodome. Here's his zone. You take a look at the Oakland Raiders just backing up, taking a look at the pass pattern develop. The receiver's looking for a hole. He finds it. It's an excellent throw by John Reeves, and it is a reception. It is not a first down, however, but it puts them in a position where now they only need two, about one and a half to two yards for a first down. Report on Dave Casper, a sprained left ankle that cut by Lester Hayes. He's doubtful to return. Report on Andy Doris. He's okay. Just had the wind knocked out of him. Here's Campbell going for two yards. Rod Martin makes the tackle just inside the Oakland 43-yard line, and now the crowd that have been very quiet, as you mentioned, Lynn, beginning to uh, have a little spark. Can you imagine Earl Campbell? Everybody here knows he's going to run the ball. And they have all the defense stacked up there. 45 is Tim Wilson coming out, making a good block to the outside mind, kicking him out, providing a hold of the inside for Earl Campbell. He is the only one to run with the football today. And now he's going to get a rest, and deservedly so. He comes out, Armstrong replaces him. And this is Adger Armstrong, and he's cut down at the 39-yard line. He has about three, so second down and seven. Reeves to throw. Way high. safety blitz on he had to get rid of that football because he didn't have, have the time to stand back there and take a look at things develop but the crowd here felt that they should have thrown a flag but the ball was thrown about eight feet over his head here it is the blitz is on 23 McKinney's coming in Armstrong picks him up real well the ball is way overthrown 3rd down and 7 matching his season total and he makes the catch right in front of the first down markers kind of edged a bit forward then as he wasn't tapped down he's made three receptions but how very very important these receptions are because they've been in third down situations two of them that he's come up with the first down and come up with the first down just by maybe a, a yard at the most was a little late getting over, so he kind of scooched forward for an extra couple of feet. They had the first down, 32-yard line. Here's Campbell back in the ball game. To the 20, 15, 10, and a foul. Flag is down at the 32. Flag drops at the 32-yard line. 27 yards if it stands up.
play back. Finally got some running room. Took it back. First down. Holding call was on Tim Wilson. The line of scrimmage now the 41-yard line, the official spotter. First down and 20. Which is interesting. They mark off a nine-yard penalty. He had Hendricks draped over him like a cheap suit, and he still made the catch. I don't know how he got this ball in there. Number eight is John Reeves going back, and he fires the ball up between two or three Oakland defenders. Number 82, Mike, Mike Renfro, 82. Rob Martin is there. He sees it. He goes after him. Ted Hendricks is there, but he gets it in between both of them and in front of number 44, the free safety, Burgess Owens. But they're still short of the first down. Second and four, a pickup of 16 on the play. On the draw, Adger Armstrong, just across the 25. There'll be third down and about two and a half. Angelo Fields comes into that offensive line. Mike Barber comes in. Dave Casper has been back in the ball game, injured ankle and all. Tim Wilson comes back in, and Earl Campbell comes back in, and you know what that means. Well, I would also think, too, that this is a, a two-down situation. Remember, they went for a touchdown on fourth and one and made it. They've got two downs to pick up the first down. They're down by six points. They need a touchdown. Play pass. Nobody's there. Way over the head of Casper. So it'll be fourth and two and a half. Now, it's even... Boy, I'm surprised they didn't run Earl Campbell twice. Here's the man to fake the ball to if you're going to fake it. But Earl didn't continue with his fake. I'm, he didn't fool anybody, but he had the ball. The ball is well overthrown, intended for Casper, 87. Which is good news that Casper had gone out of the ball game with an ankle problem. He's back in there. Fourth down, two and a half to go for the first. Play action again. Looping pass. He's there if he hits it. What a gamble, and it pays off. Listen to the crowd. throw he laid it right where it had to be for the for the reception and it really was a great catch by Barber because he was looking dead over his head and that's a tough catch to break the tie it is 16-16 Fritz he's got it Oilers back in front the Houston Oilers 79 yards in 15 plays touchdown pass of 25 yards to Mike Barber fourth down and two and a half to go and now Tony Fritz who broke the tie at 16 17 16 orders by one kicks up Whittington bounces the ball then returns it to the 31 yard line let's go back to that touchdown and this is the perfect throw here is Earl Campbell if there's going to be a run he's going to get the ball he's faking to Earl Campbell that's a better fake than the last uh, play and here it is dumping it over Lester Hayes right there perfect throw to 86 Mike Barber take a look at it again John Reed's the quarterback throwing a perfect strike to 86 the tight end and that's a tough catch because he's catching it over his head 
McKinney, number thir uh, 23, is a strong safety. He was over there, too. But Lester Hayes, I believe, was the man that Mike Barber beat. Oakland from their own 32-yard line. First down, 7.08, time remaining. Wilfrey's had a fantastic second half. All the time in the world. Goes to Derek Ramsey as tight end. 35-yard line. Gain of three, second and seven. Jason makes the tackle. You mentioned something that he had all the time to throw. That was a first down situation. Houston, as you're taking a look at Barber, Mike Barber just made that touchdown reception that put Houston ahead. And I know he's happy because he hasn't been he hasn't seeing been that, much that much action. That's his first touchdown, ball, right. Which even makes it even more important because he hasn't had the opportunity to get his hands on the ball. Mark Wilson. Throws it last moment, juggle Kenny Key, then goes out of bounds. 47, maybe the 48-yard line, has the first down. Wilson had all kinds of pressure, a gain of 13. Brazil was there for the defense. Wilson showed a lot of composure on that play because he was just getting ready to get nailed by Elvin Buffet. He got rid of that ball, and he had some zip on it, and it was an excellent throw, a perfect strike to Kenny King, picking up the first down. Ed Biles, the head coach of the Oilers. 52, Robert Brazil on the replay is looking for his man. He's taking a look. Now he sees that King has got the ball. King is getting the yard. He's getting out of bounds as we go back to live action. And Kenny King gets the call, and he goes from the 47 to the 49, picks up two. It'll be second and eight. Ted Washington, the first man there. Mike Stinsrew, the second man there. 65 is Bethay. King now has carried the ball 11 times. 81 yards rushing. We have an injury timeout as Elvin is down. Stopping the clock with six minutes and eight seconds. Now Houston 17, Oakland 16. Will be Fifth Branch, Morris Bradshaw, and Bob Chandler. No tight end on the set. It is second down and eight at the Oakland 49-yard line. They also have Arthur Whittington in the game, who's a very good pass receiver. Far sideline, yes, it is caught at the 40-yard line of Houston. Cliff Branch on the far side of the field. They're throwing at J.C. Wilson. And Cliff Branch showed you, you're going to take a look here, of how to catch this sideline pass, how to keep both feet in bounds. Sideline pass, the ball is on the way. He must keep both feet in. Great play by number 21, Cliff Branch, who has been doing that for many years. Yes, yes, he has. 40-yard line, Derek Ramsey back in and tight end. First down, Houston Territory. Kenny King. He'll have a yard, and that'll be it. Ken Kennard cut him down, and Ted Washington wrapped up the tackle. Kennard got very good penetration on that play and got a hold of Kenny King before he could get to the hole. And any time a defensive lineman can do that, get that penetration and disrupt the running back in the backfield, generally, they're not going to make much yardage. In that, that case, they didn't. And they'll mark it for no gain, so it is second and 10 at the 40. Moving on the five-minute mark, time remaining. Oilers lead by one, 17-16. Kenny King, flag is down. King goes for the sideline, but the clock will stop with the flag. Normally, a holding penalty against the offense, and that would bring it back to the 50, and that's the call. So it will be second down and 20. Oakland has been involved in a lot of games and went right, have gone right down to the wire. I can recall a couple of weeks ago, Kansas City, they had a 17 to nothing lead against the Chiefs, end up losing that. And they were on, I believe, the one yard line or, or two yard line when uh, they needed a touchdown and they lost that ball game. Holding, offense. Number 60, second down. Holding on the rookie, Kurt Marsh. Second down and 20, three wide receivers, no tight end, the offensive set. Tom Flores, the head coach of the Oakland Raiders. Exactly five minutes left to go. Wilson goes deep, he goes high, it's intercepted, Houston has the ball. Mike Reinfeldt. That is his first interception of the year.
The ball is thrown high. The only one to catch it is 37 Reinfeld. He comes up with the, the ball. Possession now to Houston. And we'll be back in just a moment. This afternoon, Earl Campbell. No game. Otis McKinney brought him down, and the Oilers will also be using every second on that 30-second clock. But right now, let's go to New York City for an update. And here's Brian Gumbel. All right, Chaz, topsy-turvy ball game in Foxborough. Now the Patriots have reassumed the lead. Tony Collins going in from a yard out, and it is 24 to 20 in the fourth period. Charlie? Thank you, Brian. Boy, that's wild up there, isn't it? 13 seconds on the 30-second clock as Houston comes out of the huddle. Seven seconds. Snap with three seconds in the 30-second clock. Campbell just to the line of scrimmage. You get your reaction from the fans here. They don't like that. Uh, but what they're trying to do is get maybe one or two first downs if they can do that. They could, even if they have to punt the football, they would put Oakland in a position where they'd have a long way to go to come up with any points. But you can't get ultra conservative. This game is too important. They've got to, they've got to win. Both teams have to win. It is now third down and 9, 28 yard line, 3.30 left to go in the game. Three wide receivers, Reeves throws, on target, first down. Dave Casper caught it out of bounds, 44 yard line. Converting a third and nine opportunity, a gain of 17 yards. Number 87. Dave Casper running an out pattern. McKinney, number 23, is guarding him man-to-man. -man. He makes the catch, and by the way, it was a perfect throw by John Reeves. And that was a big, big, big first down for the Houston Oilers. Earl Campbell very slowly coming to his feet. Now coming out of the ballgame. I would think that they would be concerned because if they're going to run with the football, Earl Campbell has been really tired. And he's more apt to cough up that football and fumble than somebody that is a lot fresher than he is. You can tell by the expression on his face that he's not only tired, but he's in pain. In reality, carrying the Oilers throughout the ballgame offensively. Well, we said in order for Houston to, to win this game, Earl Campbell is going to have to have a good day, and he's got 97 yards rushing. And 40 yards receiving. Andrew Armstrong. Five yards to the 49. It'll be second and five as Matuzak makes the tackle. We're now moving on the three-minute mark. Right now, three minutes to go. They need, they need, they need two first downs. Oakland needs to stop them, or they need the turnover, the fumble recovery, or a possible interception if they do throw from the I formation, running formation. Close to the first down. Close to the first down. I'd say yes, they do have some other running backs besides number 34, Earl Campbell. And like you mentioned a moment ago, they're fresh. Of a first down. They don't have two downs, I don't believe, to make the first down here. They've got one because I doubt if they go with it on fourth down. Take a look, Earl Campbell, he got a workout today. And a uh, report from the Oiler bench that he's complaining of... Uh, that his back is hurting him. Well, there's probably well, that's from carrying that offense on his shoulders. Yeah, is what it's probably from. Probably still a couple of uh, Oakland Raiders stuck to him back then. Nine of 16 third down opportunities. The Raiders only three of ten. Chains are set, and now Oakland stops the clock with a timeout. Two minutes and 30 seconds left to go. The Raiders. Houston went out in front of Earl Campbell from a yard out, 10-3. That was the score at half. Third quarter belonged to the Oakland Raiders. Barr, a 42-yard field goal. Whittington scoring from 12 yards out. Chris Barr, 43-yard field goal. It was Oakland 16 to 10. Fourth quarter, it Reeves to Barber, 25 yards, 17-16, Houston by one. And this is a real, I keep saying they're big plays, but it is because two and a half minutes remaining in this ball game, the two second or two minute warning is coming up. That's why Oakland called timeout. They've got to stop them now on this down. 
and get the ball back if they have any hope of winning. Third down and about two inches to go for the first down. Quarterback sneak. Yes. And Reeves has it. 45 yard line. First down, Houston. Now they will go down to the two minute warning. With the first and ten with two minutes remaining in this football game, Oakland has two timeouts remaining. They're going to have to use them after the two minute warning. There's the countdown of the clock. The Raiders with two timeouts remaining, two minute warning given to both benches. We could have a fantastic finish here. Well, here comes another of those fantastic finishes in the NFL. Oakland Raiders are known for their fantastic finishes, but right now, Houston has the ball and a first down at the Oakland 45-yard line. Adger Armstrong, and Oakland takes the timeout, so we have a moment to remind you that Don Omeyer is our executive producer at NBC Sports. Football coordinating producer is Ted Nathanson, and today's game has been produced by George Finkel, directed by Harry Coyle, associate director Joe Michaels, and associate producer is Michael Hadley. Steve Dance is our NBC statistician. Ken Johnson has been his associate. Frank Pretty and Vernon Eschenfelder are our two spotters. That's as close as I'm ever going to get to that name, <laughs> Vernon, but I keep trying every time. <laughs> All right, we got some scores. New England 24 to 20 over Miami in the fourth quarter. Also fourth quarter, Minnesota leading Tampa Bay 25 to 10. Fourth quarter score, Philadelphia 38, St. Louis 10. Detroit 28, Washington 23 in the fourth quarter. They've come back. Giants 24, Green Bay 23 in the fourth quarter. Third quarter score, Chicago 10, Kansas City 6. I, you were looking at the scores. I was looking at the Derek Dahl. I don't know what any of those scores were. Now, while we have the timeout, let's go to New York. Update Bryant Gumbel. Bryant? Okay, Charlie, Miami has assumed the lead again in Foxborough. David Woodley following them around the right side, looking for someone and doing it himself to take it in. They move in front, 26-24, pending the extra point. Chaz? Thank you, Brian. You sure there's not a basketball game that's going on up there? Second down and six. 1.53 left to go. Open with one timeout remaining. 41-yard line of the Raiders. From the I formation, Armstrong, a couple of yards shy of the first down. National Football League rules require that we present away games starting with the opening kickoff. So for stations in the team's home area, viewers in Cincinnati, Cleveland, and Pittsburgh, you'll be leaving this game in a few minutes for a telecast involving your home team. However, be sure to stay with us throughout that game as Brian Gumbel will continue to bring you updates and reports on this game. That's it. Zero timeouts left for the Oakland Raiders. Giving up too much yardage on the ground. That's all that Houston's going to do. Now their only hope is to try to strip the ball from the running back and create a turnover. 147 remaining. They must stop them now. I told you the last time before the two-minute uh, warning came about they had to stop them on the third down. Coleman is stopped at the 37-yard line, so it will be fourth down and two. McClanahan made that tackle, and that was an excellent stop. He got penetration into that backfield and hit him before he even met, came to the line of scrimmage. They're going to let the clock run down. It's 19 seconds. Oakland does They'll not run. have a timeout. A five-yard penalty here if they're going to kick the ball doesn't make any difference. That's exactly what they'll do. Parsley is coming in. They will run it down to about a minute and three when the 30-second clock expires. And then they will kick the ball, trying to drop it right into Coffin Corner. There's the delay of game, five yards. Delay of the game, offense. 102. And you might watch number 83 for the Raiders, Ted Hendricks. He holds the NFL record of 22 blocked punts, field goals, and extra point attempts. And as a footnote, he also has the NFL record of four safeties. Doesn't apply here. 
There is Tim. Oakland needs it. They need a big, big break. They're going to get the ball back with 102 remaining in this football game. They are only down by one. A big play. And they're in field goal range. They look for the block. They have 10 men coming. Gets it off. Field it at the eight yard line. Drop picked up. Watts. Watts lifts a couple of tackles. And then he is dropped. Flag will go down. Could be a face mask. If it is, they will tack it on to the end of the run. Rich Tomaselli was there. Tomaselli got a little excited, didn't he? Yes, he did. He didn't only want to make the tackle, he wanted to try to bury him in the synthetic turf out here at the Astrodome. A kick of 32 yards, a return of six. 50 seconds remaining, don't go away. That's plenty of time to get in field goal range. They're only down by one point. And remember, Mark Wilson has got a, got a gun for an arm. He can throw it a long way. And he's had the hot hand in the second half. Oakland for their own 24-yard line. No timeout. 50 seconds. Three wide receivers in the ball game. And you saw Chris Barr on the sideline. His range is 51 yards. Overthrown. Derek Gibson. Arthur Whittington was wide open. I'm sure he's going to go back and tell his quarterback that there wasn't anybody around me. Had he gotten the ball to him in the middle with Whittington's speed. They made some good yardage, plus the fact he had an opportunity to jump out of bounds. Now what the Raiders are looking for here from the 24-yard line is about 40 yards in offense. They need to get to the Houston, in the neighborhood of the Houston 35. Four-man rush for the order. Drop. They came back with the same pass. Jensen in his hands, and he dropped it. Arthur Whittington, the same pattern, was wide open once again. He was jumping up and down on the field out there because he looked around after Mark Wilson had thrown the ball and there wasn't anybody around him. Two plays took 10 seconds. Third down and 10. They need to get to the Houston 35 for Chris Byer to have an opportunity. 17-16, Oilers by one. Wilson throws. This one is cut. Bradshaw has it first down. Clock is running. 42-yard line. 30 seconds remaining. 29, 28 counting down. Everybody is hustling. The Oilers also have to, to hustle to get back on defense. Gonna get rid of it. Arthur Whittington slips the tackle. First down, then goes out of bounds, or near the first down marker. Houston, 48-yard line. 13 seconds remaining. This play needs to cover 13, 14 yards and be out of bounds. If it does. And we'll be joining those games the second half of the doubleheader. If they can accomplish this, 13 seconds, they can have two opportunities to do it. Houston takes a timeout. The clock was stopped anyway. Good call by the Oilers. They want to regroup that defense right now. Don't be in a rush because in the hurry-up offense of Oakland, that forces, forces the Oilers into a hurry-up defense. Forces them into <laughs> They're not going to get the football back. So if they can utilize their timeout to come back, get their composure, to make sure everybody understands what they're going to do defensively what the coverage is going to be and who's going to be where the ball between the Houston 47 and 48 yard line Chris Barr in this ball game is three out of four from 29 42 and 43 yards away he missed from 51 but remember we've mentioned this a couple of times 51 yards has been the magic number he has hit three field goals from that distance one in each of the last three games is he nervous? Yes. But he wants that opportunity. He wants the opportunity to try to win it. 
the line of scrimmage they normally set up seven yards behind that at 41 so that means they need to get to the 34 if 51 is to become the number of the afternoon for Chris Barr. Thirteen seconds. The Raiders need 14 yards. There it is. Oh, oh, oh. Caught out about 30, 29 yard line. Seven seconds. They'll go with it right now. Here it is. And who catches it? Number 85, Bob Chandler, who was knocked out of the ball game. Good throw by Mark Wilson. Got out of bounds. Bob Chandler, and what a story he is that he's even out here this afternoon playing in this game. Ruptured clean the first ball game of the season against the Denver Broncos. From the 37-yard line, and now Houston will take another timeout. Well, they want Barr to think about it just a little bit longer. The Oilers have one timeout remaining. Now what they might do when they come back is take their final timeout and let him think about it for still another minute. What are you doing? You're doing something. What, I, don't, what are you, I don't know if you can. Or if you sure can, you can. You can, you can take back-to-back -back timeouts. Oh, yes. Yes, you can. Paul Brown once did that when Otto Graham was hurt. And after the second timeout, George Ratterman is back and said to you, <laughs> Do you want me to go in or do you want to forfeit? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've changed the rules since That's then, I was I, just informed. I was thinking. That's what happened. <laughs> On the season, Chris Barr is hit 10 of 18. And this will be the biggest one of the year. This kick could keep the Raiders in contention. In contention, in court. 47-yard attempt. He hit it. No, it is no gun. He misses from 47 yards away to two seconds left of the clock. The crowd tells the story. that it was to the right. Had the expression of John Corker. Two seconds left, and John Reeves will fall on the football. The Houston Oilers record will be five and five. Still a long shot, but they're still in the race. The Raiders record is four and six. That should take them out of playoff contention. November well decides the teams that make the playoffs. And the Houston Oilers open the month of November with a victory behind John Reeves, the quarterback. The final is 17-16.